Right, so you can see this. If I summarize before I start, now we discussed about continuous measures. We talked about monolithic and acetate, monolithic and acetate. Then we also talked about load and look. Line. Then we talked about splitting and analog. Here the maximum moment is MB, the minimum moment is MA. Then we also talked about the MD, the load moment being in between. Then I said, because of this reason, we said it is governed by MB minus MA ratio. Difference. Difference governs. So the line load moment governs. We learned about that also. Then we also learned about another important thing. We apply different loads, different loads, into a bridge and then you can get a bending moment diagram and that bending moment diagram will generate zero secondary moments, M2 is zero, zero secondary moments. So this will generate zero secondary moments. So this is stress concrete. So I will uh, recording in progress. Right. So last time we discussed about the design of continuous stress concrete bridges and uh, the type of bridges that we used. Use are actually uh, box girders, and one of your batchmates has sent me some photos. Um, And it looks like this. It looks like this. These are the kind of box girders you get. And uh, some of them have uh, uh, transverse space dressing as well. So basically, uh, how you do this is you will go for a section. I'm going through only half the section. This pretty thin. And because it's thin and then we need some pre-stress. Axial pre-stress. And in addition to that, you'll get a lot of ducts either at the top or bottom. Uh, this is in the span. And you'll get a lot of ducts here over the support. And these uh, segments are cast using a technique called match casting. So you create the bridge, you cast one segment, you will have some, some roughness, then you cast, play, play, place a paper, cast the next one against it. So at the side, there will be a perfect fit perfect fit because one has been cast against the earlier cast surface of the other separated by a thin paper thin paper so it's called match casting so all batched so then what you do is you you can have a gantry so it's a gantry and you can hang these elements and these elements from the gantry and then you will install PT this way and you will install PT this way. 
So you can get pre stress. So if you have consider that the full bridge, you can end up having pre stress like this. So these are all options that are available. And uh, our task today is to see how we can uh, generate the uh, cable profiles uh, so that all the stress conditions will be automatically satisfied and also the assumed M2 values will be generated. And we are going to use a spreadsheet that I have written some time ago and I'll use that as an example. So we have learned so many important things. One is if you have a beam, you apply a set of loads, you get a bending moment diagram, and you can get rid of the kinks by get applying the load in the other direction. The reaction can be applied as a distributor load, and then you can get a nice bending moment diagram. Get a nice bending moment diagram. So the, all these are possible, and once you divide this bending moment diagram by RP, you can get a diagram like this. It all goes to this point. And this is an eccentricity diagram. Eccentricity. So when you divide the bending moment by, uh, by the Pre-stressing force, you will get It is number two. Right. So then we said our design method is because we know the red dot bending moment diagram, we are going to assume this is MD and, and M, M2 as a percentage of MD at sub. We said we are going to assume it that way. Then our method is we have the bending moment in a lock. So we have this bending moment diagram and then we change the origin of the diagram so that this is M2 and then as a result of changing the origin of the diagram, we get a lesser value for this moment and we get a higher value for this moment, higher and this is lesser. And if you look at the section, section is like this. So this is very efficient in the higher moments and less efficient with 
lesser moments. So less efficient, highly efficient. So where, so it's highly efficient in selling. Less efficient in hogging. Why? In the hogging, compression occurs at the bottom and the bottom plant is small. The in sagging, compression occurs in the top flange. Top flange is huge. So it's a perfect situation. Perfect situation. So secondary warmers can be used very effectively, like we do with the moment redistribution in, in uh, reinforced concrete design. So basically, we get a very favorable situation when we have M2, but, and we know M2. So we have to generate M2 that we have assumed. So the method is select a high enough free stress to select a cable profile, not a cable profile, but we select a zone. How do we select a zone? When we draw the magnet diagram, for a selected pre-stress, we get a maximum extensity and a maximum extensity and a minimum extensity, so we can get a zone, not a diagram, so we get a zone. We get a zone. So within this zone, we can fit a cable, but the catch is this must generate M2. This must generate M2. We can fit a cable, but all the cables will not work because this cable has to generate M2. In the case of simply supported case, any any cable is okay within the zone, but for a continuous bridge, any any cable profile is not okay because you have no guarantee that the selected profile will generate the assumed secondary moments. If the assumed secondary moments are not generated, then the moments that you use for your calculations will be low. So because of that reason, we have a tricky situation and that has to be handled separately. That has to be handled separately. And how we handle it is, we go to the next step. So we have a profile, number three. Number two, select a cable profile zone. When we convert the cable profile zone to the a uh, line of thrust zone. Thrust zone. Line of thrust means M2 is 0. And to get AP, we say ES minus M2 over RP. We use this relationship. EP is equal to ES minus M2 over RP. And M2 is positive, saggy moment. M2 is a saggy moment. So M2 is a positive moment. So basically, EP profile lies here, ES profile lies here. So now, when you are converting these uh, zones, we know any bending moment diagram due to loading system on the same beam. is a line of thrust. Thrust O M2 is zero. Why? M2 occurs due to pre-stress that occurs as a result of and these are equivalent loads. Loads 
and the equivalent load is W L squared over 8 is equal to E P P multiplied by E and W is equal to 8 P E divided by S squared. So this W is given by 8 P E divided by S squared. So that's how you calculate W. So we can apply equivalent loads when you know the profile. When you know the profile, we can apply equivalent loads. And this is called load balancing method and it's widely used in the design of flat cells. Widely used in the design of flat cells. Uh, so basically any menu moment diagram uh, due to loading system is the same. On the same wheel is a line of thrust. So what we do is now we want to compare a bending moment diagram which is in kilonewton meters with extensity E which is in meters. So it's like comparing apples and oranges. So if you want to compare apples and apples, what we do is we go for RPE that is m multiplied by kilonewtons, so you get the t kilonewton meter. So, so basically line of thrust zone can be converted to a bending moment zone. How you convert it to a bending moment zone is we, we know the pre-stress impose RT already selected and R is the loss ratio and generally we, we consider the loss ratio to be about 30 percent. P is the initial PT we apply and we know we assume a value for R, R P so that we get a continuous a zone and once we have the zone what we do is we convert it to a line of bending moment zone not a so, so we get a bending moment zone. It can be anywhere. We get a zone. And what is our task? Use at 2000 onto the same beam. Use at 2000. And on the same beam, apply various loads. Various loads, it is arbitrary. You have to do it manually. And manually ensure that we have a profile that goes like that. So you manually you have to find a profile. Manually you have to find a profile. And once you find a profile manually, which is a bending moment diagram, so this is a bending moment diagram. And if the bending moment diagram goes out, the bending moment diagram goes like this. What is the indication? This load is too much. You reduce the load here. This load is too much. That's why bending moment diagram is going that way. So you reduce the load then until it comes inside. So this is a manual method where you write this limit as 8000. This is 12,000 and you mark, mark, write this as 14,800, this is 9,600. So you know the upper boundary and lower boundary and find a bending moment diagram that fits inside this. The moment you do that, you can find a profile, a bending moment diagram. And any bending moment diagram, M2 is zero, and what we want is M2 being zero because it's a limit on line of thrust. And then what you do is next step is sum of four five. Next step is transfer eight two limits on EP. That is bending moment diagram divided by RP.
So this is 26, 11, 2022, number 5. So, then from this, if you know EP, we can find this. The beauty is, the, with this method, you get a, you get a beam, And within the beam, you have found the limits on e ES for a selected pre-stressing force. And in addition to that, you have these additional boundaries which says the cable must stay inside the beam. And finally, you get a profile selected as a bending moment diagram due to a set of loads that goes like this. And there is a ES profile because it's inside the beam. Because EP can be outside the beam. Because it's not the actual location. The apparent location outside the beam. So inside the beam, what are the what are the specialties of this ES? All stress limits are satisfied. What is the other important thing? We generate the assumed M2. M2 values, assumed M2 values. And that's it. So why do you want a profile? We need a profile that satisfies all the stress conditions. If there are stress violations, pre-stress concrete beam can either crack or crush. It can fail in crushing or it can fail in cracking. Normally a concrete beam will fail in cracking. Whereas a pre-stressed concrete beam can fail in crushing or cracking either way. So we have to actually uh, find this, uh, ensure that all the stress conditions are satisfied. And uh, the M2 assumed is generated. The M2 assumed is generated. So the moment that happens, you have a perfect design, perfect. Optimize this. Why I say optimized? Because we have very effectively used M2 values to reduce spending moment above a course. So continuous pre-stress concrete beams can become very, very cost effective. You can have very long spans up to about 200 meters. And slender sections, slender, portionally strong sections. So all these uh, hollow sections are torsionally very strong sections. The reason is torsional flow will occur around the beam. The torsional flow will occur around the beam. And then the, when that happens, the lever arm is very high. Because of that reason, the effect of torsion can be effectively persisted by using box girders. And these are also called spine beam riggers, spine beam riggers. These are also called spine beam riggers. And that is the design method. And you can see we, we have to do a lot of calculations. And the moment you come across a lot of repetitive calculations, we go for spreadsheets. We can actually write coding using uh, any programming language. You can write coding. And I have written coding use for all these. Uh, this something is a method that I developed for my PhD. and. Uh, before that, 
engineers need not know how to design this in a logical way by real of this method and i wrote all the coding in port run 37 and it was linked with c and then it was linked to prolog and there was another blackboard shell uh, prolog that's a blackboard architecture for the for an expert system developed by University of Edinburgh. And then uh, I also use graphical routines. And all this happened in 1988, October. December 1990. And I developed this method in somewhere in October 1989. And pre concrete was invented in 1930s, 35, 36. And the first bridge came out in 1939. So after 50 years after the first bridge was completed, the the me method was developed for continuous bridges because this is something that baffled the engineers. The reason is you have a beam, you have the bending moment in it all, in A, in B, in B, in A. You don't know M2, and once you complete, Sunday M2 appears, but then the moment the M2 appears, what will happen to this many moment diagram? It will change. It will change. What is the change? The origin changes. The origin changes. The many moments change. So you are used 10,000 year for design, and after the design, you find the moment is 12,000. Actual moments is 12,000. So all your design calculations are, are not useful. They are useless. So this was the problem that baffled all the engineers. And this was solved. I solved this problem in 1989, 90. And uh, by by December 1990, I completed all the work, and by April 1991, I completed the thesis, and so I was six months ahead, two years, six months, I completed all this work and finished the thesis, and then uh, took another one year to sort out all the other matters and came back to Sri Lanka at the end of March 1992. So, I didn't do any experimental work for the, for the PhD, it was all uh, theoretical and did the method. So now, after coming to Sri Lanka, somewhere in 1999, we converted all this to a spreadsheet. Spreadsheet based calculation. And unfortunately, that spreadsheet was written as compression as negative, tension as positive. But it doesn't matter because uh, whether you, whatever the way you write it, uh, it's the same set of equations. Only thing is, uh, when you have a different sign convention, the different equations, but the answers will be the same. Answers will be the same. So you don't have to worry. And I thought of writing it, but later I thought you can write the program with compression as positive. And I will demonstrate with the program I have. Right. So let's see how the program can be written.
Okay, let's see how this could be written. Right, so let's see. I'll share the screen. Right. Can you see the spreadsheet? So this is a beam having the first span as 40 meters. The second span is 50 meters. And the last span is another 50, 40 meters. <coughs> Altogether, length is 130 meters. So, fair long bridge. And uh, so basically, uh, how do you select a cross section? That is one of the key things. And uh, right. So the first thing that you have to say is, how to select the cross section. So we have a, we need say 3.5 meters for each lane and 1.5 meters of pedestrian pavement. So altogether 10 meters in the so if it is 10 meters in width, if I'm drawing an idealized shape, and we get So if this is L, This can be about 0.3 to 0.45 L. <coughs> the idea is, you know, you should not have a too long cantilever. Or sometimes you can go up to about 0.5. And the thickness of the branch will depend, can be about 0.25 up to 0.3. Or it can be even 0.35, but generally we don't maintain a uniform value. And depending on the type of uh, pre-stressing ducts that we use, this can be about 0.3 to 0.35 meters. And the bottom flange, anything above 175 millimeters is okay. But what you have to keep in mind is don't add a uh, too thick bottom flange because it's not going to do any work in the spans rather than adding weight to the structure. Uh, rather than adding weight to the structure. So because of that reason, mm -hmm. the actual section can be like this. Mm. 
Mm. You try to optimize the se section by using conchers, tapering, because these will be cast by using steel shutters. So you can have complicated shape. And it's very important that you have chamfers because when the torsional shear flow occurs, it needs a path for smooth flow, path for smooth flow. So you should not have a junction like this. There's no smooth flow, there's a concentration. And there's a reduction in shear capacity. So always you'll make sure there are chamfers so that the shear flow can occur without any hindrance. Is that clear, Vashita? Yeah. And uh, there was another rule which said, uh, okay, when you are selecting the height, select about two meters minimum, so that uh, inside the box, when you are in the construction, a person can actually uh, walk easily. But these days I have actually designed Orgonotta Prio because uh, it was already designed. We could not change the height of the structure. So I have designed these ones. So I have an overall height of about 1.4 meters. So basically there's uh, very little space for you to work inside this. But uh, the Chinese contractor managed by using special formal currents and so on, he managed because they said they can do this 1.4 meter height. So because the contractor said they can do 1.4 meter height, I said, if you are happy, I have no objection. I will do the design so that it will be 1.4 meter, but uh, it is a large structure, it's usual to have about 1.4. Uh, 5 meters inside, or 5 meters inside, so that you can uh, walk inside without uh, affecting very much. And sometimes it becomes about 1.7, 1.8 meters, then you will have plenty of headroom inside the box door. And these are called spine beams. These are called spine beams. Right? So, and so to select this, we have we select something like 0.3 meters for the top flange and we see what I have selected in the spaceship program. And the uh, web scan be 0.3 or 0.35 meters. Then again, the concept is don't try to make the web too thick. Why? If you want, you can do these changes. So you have the bridge, one support, another support. So locally you can have different different water flange. And similarly, you can if you look at the plan, you look at the web. So to this you can have more material in the web. You want you can have more material with the plan. Land view. The reason is at the support there's high shear. If there's high shear, what I will do? Just have more concrete. And here we do. elevation. At the support we need we have a compression at the bottom flange, so locally increase the thickness of the bottom flange. So all these possibilities are there. Top flange, we don't have a problem because there's already, we have got 10 meter wide bottom top flange, which will have enough concrete to resist uh, any kind of bending moment caused by a second moment. A probable load can be assisted. <clears throat> so, all these 
पॉसिबिलिटी साथ दे ऑल दिस पॉसिबिलिटी साथ दे सो हियर यू गेट थिकनिंग लोकली एट द सपोर्ट हियर यू गेट थिकनिंग लोकली फॉर शियर एट द सपोर्ट so all these possibilities are there so so we don't have to worry too much so we have we can select the section so let's see what is the section that i have selected so let's look at this section uh, half width of the top plan is 5 meters thickness of the top plan is 0.3 meters these are average values Depth of the section is 2.1 meters. Width of the web is 0.35 meters. Half width of the bottom flange is 2.5 meters, and thickness of the bottom flange is 175 millimeters. And based on that, I have calculated the distance to the centroid, and then the second moment of area, and Z1 and Z2 values. So all those values have been calculated, and The same thing can be used for different web thicknesses, different depths, and uh, so you can see a number of values can be seen. So we go go up and see what are the values that we have used. So the idea is uh, don't try to use a too large section because bigger the section, bigger the bending moment effect so we don't want to have too high bending moment so because of that we will uh, try and minimize the section size so let's see what are the values that we have used Two point five zero six three one point four four one six. Let's see what are the values. One point four four one six. One point four four one six. Let's see what is the eigenvalue is. One point four four one six. Two point one is the depth. Point six nine. Point six nine. Distance to center of this point six nine. Okay, it looks like this one. One point four four one six. Yeah, I have used this one. I have used this particular section, but you can write a small spreadsheet like this, so then it will automatically calculate. Otherwise, you can go to SAP two thousand or minus and uh, calculate the the section of this once you know the dimensions. Once you do the dimensions, the program, the, the, the computer program will automatically calculate all the sections and tell you the values. And then what we do is uh, we we'll, uh, look at the values. And before we look at the values, Bashita, shall we take a small break so that you can. Uh, About uh, nine nine fifty five. Shall we start? Okay. Okay.
Bajaj, shall we start? Right, okay. So, uh, actually, this uh, spreadsheet was written some time ago. So, it was written for cube strength and uh, maximum tension compression for highway bridges is 0.4 times FCU. So, 40 megapascal concrete. 0.4 into 40 is 16. So I have written the program in kilonewtons and meters. So I have got a value of 16,000 and it's minus. And I have kept an allowance of 1,000 or 1 newton per millimeter squared for any uh, thing that I don't take into account. And similarly, I have considered that. Uh, for if you are designing it as class 1 structure, in Sri Lanka we design it as class 2 structures. So if you are designing at a class 1 structure, then uh, the tension FTW is sub 0 and FT, FT at transfer is about minus 1 newtons per minute, uh, plus 1 meters per minute squared. So you can see, or if it is class 2, 0.36 square root of FCU is the uh, tension allowed. So you can have different values. So so it's it's about 2.3 in tension. It's around 2.3 in tension. So it's a so these are the values. So we see what are the values that we have used in the spreadsheet. Uh, so let's have a look at the spreadsheet now. And you can see. Now when you look at the spreadsheet, you can see other use uh, FTW as 500, FCW as uh, minus 15,000. So basically, uh, compressive stress, oh, allowable compressive stress is 16. I have used 15,000 and the tensile stress is about 2,000, uh, little about 2,000. I have used a value of 500. So I am I'm keeping a little margin uh, for unforeseen effects. For unforeseen effects. So when I finally check the stresses by taking all into account, uh, this preliminary design will be perfectly okay. Perfectly okay. So you can keep a little margin when you are doing the preliminary design. And then we look at uh, what the euro code says. Euro code goes on the basis of cylinders and cylinder strength, FC, FCK, and 0.6 times FCK is the allowable stress. Allowable stress. And it will also allow little tension in class one and class, uh, class one structures, no tension, and class two structures, it can allow some tension. So we have to, uh, so there's no huge difference between uh, these, but uh, Euro code allow us to go for a slightly higher uh, stress range and which is advantage. So, so basically if you do a design for Euro code, the chances are it will be more economical. So it's better to go for Euro code for PT designs in future because we can get a certain cost advantage by going for a leaner Structure subjected to higher stresses. And the other advantage of uh, Euro code is FCK can be 50 or 60 megapascal. So you can go for higher strengths. The moment you go for high strengths, well, first thing is you should be able to obtain these high strengths. And that's where we make use of admixtures and fly ash, fly ash and admixtures. The reason is, uh, you know, you are you can have some reasonable high stresses at transfer, if they are transfer, but uh, by the time it comes to the working level, you will find that the strengths are much higher. The reason is, when you do match casting, we are, we are not allow adding stresses, we add the stresses later. So because we are adding the stresses less later, we can go for higher values 
And anyway, we make use of fly ash a lot and water reducing admixtures. And we generally go for uh, higher end, higher end super processors or high performance super processors. So there's a, if you look at the super processors manufactured in uh, Sri Lanka, you get uh, for Millennium Technologies, you get uh, uh, Supercrete or Hypercrete. If you go, go for Hypercrete, then uh, you get uh, very low water cement ratios, like you can eat something like 120 kilograms per meter cube. And with this, you can eat something like 150 160 kilograms per meter cube. So these are the values that you can look for. And that actually gives you a huge advantage in the cost. And when you go for value engineering solutions, again, you'll find that value engineering can easily improve uh, BS design the moment you adopt Eurocode. So always think about Eurocode and you can do your coursework, work or assignment with uh, F compression at trans uh, compression at working as positive tension at working as negative and you can also look at Eurocode guidelines because when you look at EC2 you can see the guideline EC2 and then you can easily decide uh, convert this spreadsheet that I'm giving you to a uh, to suit EC code and also I'm using 40, 50, 40, and your spans can be 30, 40, 30, or 50, 60, 50, or any value like that. So you can go for different spans, and you can go for something like uh, 40, so 50, 70, 50. You can try different values and array, perform the spreadsheet and the so I'm using five meter interval so the number you have to add columns in between to make sure these values uh, the your, your values are represented by the spreadsheet because this particular spreadsheet is written for 40 meters 50 meters and 40 meters thanks So now we we'll look at the spreadsheet again. So you can see the chain ID is 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. 40 is highlighted because it's a support. And again, 90 is highlighted because it's a support. So once you highlight some columns and rows, you can easily uh, manage it. And the uh, I value is uh, 1.4416, area of concrete is 2.503. And here I am considering only half the section, half the section. Then you'll ask why I consider half the section. So uh, this is the reason. Uh, when, I, when I have a section like this, I can create a village by dividing it into half and having one beam here, another beam here. This is one possibility. So where the village will look like this. On the other hand, I can have two smaller beams here representing something like that. And then possible. So we can have, we have the section and we can have the village like this. 
On the other hand, we can have the relish like this. And we can have a village like this. So if you want, you can have a wider village. The advantage of this is you can place the vehicles at different locations. Whereas uh, this is good if it is a two lane. This is good if it is more than, so you have a pedestrian pavement and two lanes. Then it's not balanced, so better to have something to represent the pedestrian pavement. So, so we might go for a village like this, a wider village. Whereas uh, if you have only two lanes and everything can be lumped together, so so you might consider uh, just two villages. So because of that reason, when you get the bending moment, you get the bending moment on half the beam. So what you do is. We add the bending moment of these two and get how bending moment on half the beam. So we add the bending moment on this village and this village member and then we consider half the So that's why I have considered half the beam in the spreadsheet. Um, then what we do is we have depth of the section, distance to the extreme fibers from the centroid. You can see uh, it's close to the centroid is close to the top fibers. Y1 is smaller but, and it's negative. Y2 is positive, 1.4 meters. This 0.7 meters, 1.4 meters. Overall depth is 2.1 meters. So one third height, two thirds height to get the centroid. The reason is the wider top flange and the cover to cover is considered as 0.2 meters, 200 millimeters, you might say why. The reason is we are talking the cover to the duct, not to the cover to the reinforcement. We are talking about cover to the duct. So if this is the cover, then you can get E minimum and E maximum values because I told you there are physical limits. We can't, we can't place the, place the, Tendon at the extreme fiber, we need cover for protection. So we have, um, we have extreme values for minimum extensity and maximum extensity. We can't just have any value that we like. And based on all these, you can find Z1 and Z2, that is I divided by Y1 and I divided by Y2. And again, you can see Z1 is negative. It's a higher value. Z2 is positive. And then, then you can get M monolithic and M has been. These have been obtained like this. And you'll ask how I obtained them. And this is how I got it. And the first thing is the centroid. Centroid is here. It's about 0.7. This is about 1.4. So this is how you get the uh, centroid at the top. And then I have considered that it will be constructed with 5 meter cantilever. And the dead load moment will come due to loading on all these areas. These areas. This area. And then you get a bending moment diagram that does that, that goes this, and when you add all three, you'll get a final bending moment diagram, and that is as built, and then you'll get monolithic, and we apply MD, yeah, and we can get the MD. So these all can be obtained with SAP 2000 or MIDAS CV. Or G and J can be used, but CV also can be used.
then you can see a uh, superimposed dead load moment also comes and uh, then based on all these things you can uh, the live load minimum moment and live load maximum moment is actually based on sub 2000 based analysis so you analyze different load combinations and get the minimum moments and maximum moments and uh, so you have to consider pattern loading for that you have to consider various pattern loading so superimposed dead load is just a one value apply that get the many moment diagram just like that but when it comes to live loads you can apply load here load here and you get the bending moment in the like this then you can have loaded everywhere you get a bending moment diagram like this and then you get another diagram where this is loaded and you get this so when you look at all situations you get you get something like this as ml live load moment Live load moments will be that, and then you will get a bending moment in it up. Like that. And the as built moment will be in between. This M as built. And let's say this 10,000, and we say 80% is MD. So what we say is MD is M2 is 8,000, M2 is 80% 8, of S built, so it's 8,000. And then what we do is we chain the origin of the diagram and we will get this. Then our design moments will be this, MB, and our design moments will be this, MA. So our design moments will be measured from the, not from the original zero line, but now we have a different zero line, that is the origin of the bending moment diagram has been modified, and so you have a new bending moment envelope, and that will give all the real bending moments that you need to design and use for design. But here M2 is an assumed value. You can assume anything that you like. So we see what I have assumed. What I have assumed. Only condition is it has to be less than the dead, dead value. Dead value. So you can see. Monolithic is important, as built is important, and as built here is 9,959. And if you look at M2 that I assume, that is 7,967. So if you divide 7,967 by uh, this value, as built, 9,959, you can see I have assumed 0.8, 80%. At this support, I have assumed 80%. And this support, the as built, is 7,691. And MT, M2 is 7,140 divided by uh, 7,691. 7, and at that support, I have assumed um, from 93%, is it? 9,691 is 7,114. So, 7,000, uh, 
So whatever the value that is less than 100%, so, so I have gone for very high second bonus. And with that, you can see the advantage that you get. Uh, what happens is the many moments above the support is much lower, the many moments in the spans are much higher. But if you look at the section, section is very efficient in carrying second moments. Section is weak in carrying only moments. So by using a secondary moments, we can create a very advantageous position. Advantageous position. So Vashita, can you understand all that? Here we are making use of uh, SAP 2000 or MIDAS civil or MIDAS gen for generating the bending moment in the book. Can you understand, Vashita? Okay, now you can see uh, M uh, live and uh, when you look at M2 value, what we have assumed is only this value. What is this value? Uh, M2. M2 is this 7967 and then uh, how many sections are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we are dividing it to 8. 7,000. 7,967 divided by 8. 995. So 7967 minus 0.995. 7. 967 minus uh, 995, 6972. Sorry, but this value is, sorry, this value. 7965, I have entered it manually, I think. 
So I entered those values manually, but uh, you can see it's pretty close to seven nine six seven uh, multiplied by point seven five. 5975 70. So I have entered some values by taking, uh, so this is 7967, this is 0. So this should be 0 0.125 times 7967, this should be 0 0.25, this is 0 0.375, this is 0 0.5, this is 0 0.625. So likewise, you can find the In between, it varies from 7967, reduced to 7114. Oh, how many sections? There are 10 sections. So, so every one, seven, nine, six, seven, minus seven, one, one, four, divided by 10. So, it, a reduction of 85. So, seven, nine, six, seven, minus 85, seven, eight, eight, two, seven, eight, eight, two. 7882 minus 85 7797 minus 85 7712. So it goes like that. So it's uh, the variation of uh, second moments is uh, variation of second moments. So it is like this seven nine six seven seven one one four and we divide it into number of so you because you know these values you can find these things. And you have to enter it manually, or if you want you can write the equation and get it done. Uh, entering such a simple thing in manually is not a big deal, so you can just manually enter it. And, uh, so, so after that, uh, you get uh, the resultant moments. This is M MA and MB actual, but the, what we use for the calculation is the modified moment because we have to add. MA and M2, MA is uh, minus 23,097 plus 7967 will give you the addition. So this is minus 23,097 plus 7967, you get minus 15,130. And you get uh, this value 11,669. Plus 7967, you get. So you can see there's a drastic reduction in the bending moment over the support. Drastic reduction. And you can also say there's a significant increase in the bending moment in the span. So M2A, M2B, MB, MB actual, 17,000 here. But here you can see it has increased up to uh, 20,000. It has increased up to 20,000. So there's some increase and in this section you can see a bigger increase. So 18,000 has increased up to 26,026. And then I have calculated a value called Pmax uh, allowable. That is uh, not something that you have to do specifically, but uh, this is a kind of maximum value that I have defined by considering the shape of the magnal diagram. And can you remember, last time I showed you that these two points are important. And this is the Ft value, this is the Fc value. So that means it is better to remain in this region. Why? Why is it good to remain in this region? Because the beam fails in tension. But you can also do this. You can select a pre stress force in this area. What will happen? It's a high pre stress force. If the pre stress force is very high, 
the beam will fail in compression. So generally we don't like uh, beams failing in compression, we like the beams failing in tension because uh, always we get enough warning when the beams fail in tension. So because of that reason, generally we can define this as a maximum value for P6. Not this point. That point is an absolute maximum, but it's not a fixed value, it varies. But uh, this, this does not depend on the bending moment. This line and this line, the pre-stressing forces are independent of moment. These actually depend on the section properties. So because of that reason, we can define a maximum value. We can define a maximum value. Hello. Right. So basically, now you can look at, uh, I have selected a trial P spacing force, 26,000. And then, uh, so once, and also I have selected the, the loss ratio R, uh, loss as 30%, so R is 0.7 times the pre stressing force. So this is the initial pre stressing force. And then along the beam, I can type, I can find the limits of ES, limits of upper limit ES1, upper limit ES2, lower limits, lower limits. And then uh, the reason is this. So once you know the actual bending moments, we can draw the magnet diagram minus Z1 over A, minus Z2 over A, and we get lines like going like that. So if you select any pre-stressing force, select any pre-stressing force, there are four limits, four limits. And you have to select, out of those four, our actual limit is this. Our actual limit is that. He has to lie between those two. So for every section, this is 1 over 26,000, this is 1 over P, this is X and C T. So this is 1 over 26,000 force. For every diagram, every section, we can find two limits. Two lim four limits, out of four limits, we can find two limits. So in the spreadsheet, you can use the minimum and maximum functions and easily do that. If you look at how it was done, and here you can see, these are straight away from all these values, the equations, and this is another equation, this is another equation, and the upper and lower limits are the maximum and minimum, and also there's an additional limit due to the cover requirement. So what actually happens is you cannot you cannot have all these limits if the cover is here, then it is reduced. Then the cover is cover is here. E max is here, E max is here, then, then, then you get an additional limit. So you have to look at 
the power to you can see the neurocardiac pressure you can see lower minimum of d31 d32 and d11 d11 is d max d11 is d max c max so from that you can find the upper limit and lower limit right and don't worry about this part of these beta values i'll come to that bit later we not worry about it so now we have this situation and so what we have is we have a beam and we have r we have p r is 0.7 p is 26000 and we can get the limits along the beam and we have a maximum limit e max here is the centroid we have e minimum and here we have e maximum so with all these limits we can draw a feasible region and the feasible region will be feasible region is that so it's very useful to see this graphically so on the spreadsheet we can draw this and so basically on the spreadsheet we can draw all this and we go down so we make some line of thrust selected limit of cable profile selected here you can see the limit on cable profile goes like that and it does not go outside the limits and uh, so this red color one is the upper limit blue color one is the lower limit and this is the cable that i have fitted and before fitting that i have to actually convert it to a bending moment convert it to a bending moment so we see how i have converted to a bending moment and uh, for that we look at uh, this so what i have done is this i know this diagram i have this the diagram and the diagram like this where the limits are like that Like that. Then what we do is, I'll go here. I'll have the beam, and the beam I have got has something like that. So a typical case can be something like this. something like this and the centroid here a zone like this so like that and what we do is we convert it to r t e s sorry before this we convert it to ep profile we convert it to ep it is equal to es minus m2 over rp using this equation we can convert it to this so it will go like that but we have the the maximum limit also coming to the scene 
So you get this, it goes like that, and here you get something cut off, and you get an EP zone like this. And the beauty is in this zone, M2 is zero. M2 is zero. So what we do now is because so it's a matter of fitting a bending moment diagram. And I told you we have a problem because bending moment is in kilonewton meters, whereas these dimensions are in meters. So what we do is we go for so this EP, RP, EP. We go for RP, EP. We go for RP, EP. The moment you go for RP, EP, we get a bending moment diagram. So we'll get now we don't have to worry about the diagram, so we get it. Something going like that. Same shape, but multiplied. And we'll we get P, R, P, E, P. It's in kilonewton meters. So what we do is we pour, we one and the other select a bending moment diagram that can fit inside by analyzing this beam in SAP 2000. And we analyze it in SAP 2000 with various loads. Some can be bigger, some can be like that. And sometimes you can might get even point loads. And bigger loads, small loads, one way the other, fine. This is the bending moment diagram. This has to be done manually. So what I have done is I have selected this manually. So we'll uh, look at the spreadsheet. And here you can see I get RP, EP upper, RP, EP lower. And uh, you don't have to worry about this part. It will, this is uh, something needed for some additional calculation. But uh, if you are doing a design, this need not be done. But this is to show that uh, what we, uh, what the secondary moments that we generated is exactly the same as the secondary moments that we have assumed. So there is an additional part, so don't worry about that. And then uh, you get concord. These are actually the values that I have selected. I have selected these values and I have entered these values. And uh, so, so from, and you can see here you get 11,870. I have selected 6,015. Uh, 13,000. Here you come closer. 5,000. 14,000 between these two. And here you get 10,391 pretty close, 16,253. And here you can see a slight violation somewhere here. I saw some slight violation here. Here you can see, I although I have tried, I could not get exactly into this one. Now there is a slight violation here. And here, look, here again, I'm inside. The range here yeah, again is a slight violation, but uh, I have actually entered those values. Right? And so, if you look at the profile, So this is a plot of those values. And can you remember? I had a small violation here and small violation here. So I have tried to a certain extent and when it is pretty close, I have said it's okay. Why? Can you remember I kept a small allowance in the beginning? I kept one Newton per millimeter scar type allowance. So there's a minor violation in this in the 
in the calculation still it's not a problem because it will not violate the stresses minor violation but the important thing is it should generate the assume second number so after this point now we have ep rp so once you divide by rp what will happen you get ep then es is equal to ep plus m2 over rp so that's the equation so you can convert it to be like this and then you have to calculate and see whether it is it is produced in the assumed secondary moments and here you can see m2 actual is this these are the actual values that we have assumed assumed values are 7000 967 and 7100 Seven nine six seven. That is K this K twenty three K twenty three K twenty three. And I have to select these two values K twenty three K twenty three. K U23, these are the selected values, these are the actual values that I have calculated. Oh, oh. Right, so uh, now you can see the selected value is 7967, generated value is 7972, pretty close. So, we, this method we can uh, calculate, we can assure that the generated moment is exactly the same as actual moment that we have assumed. And uh, here you will see in the spreadsheet there are some additional portion and that portion is actually to help you to calculate these values so these are calculated by using those and uh, so basically uh, you have to find the bending moment and to find the bending moment like this, uh, the second is uh, to, to determine the value of secondary moment by using the pre stressing force and the cable profile. We have to do some additional calculation, calculating something called beta 2, beta 3, S, and all kinds of things. And uh, that part is slightly some additional part because in the actual design, when you follow this method, you still generate the same second, but just for a check, I have calculated the secondary moments also generated by the table profile, selected, and showed that those values are pretty close to the same. On the other hand, what you can do is you can write the, the design equations here for pre stress, the stress occurring. And see what are the final stresses that occur in the beam, along the beam. And if the, and we can easily show that the final stresses will be the same. Will be within the allowable limits, within allowable, within the allowable limits, except here where we had a slight violation on the side side. But because we have kept a, kept a small allowance of one Newton per minute squared, so can you remember when the limit was 16,000, I consider the limit as 15,000. So if there's a minor violation, it's not a major problem. It's not a major problem. So this is the method. You can use a spreadsheet. And because we are using a spreadsheet and set 2,000 type program, we can easily generate the bending moment and loss. We can find the as built and 
actual bending moment diagrams as built and the monolithic bending moment diagrams by analyzing sub 2000 means and then uh, then we can use sub 2000 to generate co the concordant profile here something called concord concord is the bending moment diagram that i got you can see these values are manually entered here. These are manually entered values. And I think not manually entered. I would have got a spreadsheet and done a uh, copy and paste. So that's why you get some values here. You can see some values. Some values here. So those are because I have done some copy and paste. And because of that reason, I get this um, uh, decimal places also. So basically, uh, you know, you have to, you have to, uh, you can do these calculations and uh, rather than entering manually, I have entered by using copy and paste, but you, have, you, you get the sub 2000 values vertically and you have to paste it horizontally. So you have to try a few tricks and do that. Otherwise you can enter the values. So basically this concord is something from SAT 2000, it has nothing to do with the, with the spreadsheet. Uh, this uh, concord came from SAT 2000 and it's a bending moment diagram. It's a bending moment diagram for a particular set of loading. Mashita, is that clear? It's clear, right? Okay. So basically, uh, the design of a continuous beam is a little more complicated. Because in the case of simply supported one, once you determine the range, you don't have to worry. You don't have to worry. But in the case of continuous beam, just by selecting any any profile will not work. It has to be uh, fitted in a systematic manner so that you fit it into an EP profile, not to ES profile. Because EP represents zero secondary moments, any bending moment diagram also represents zero secondary moments. What is the reason? The, the geometric deformations are compatible. So basically, uh, due to the, due to the secondary moments occur because we, we ensure that the uplifting at the, at the internal supports are zero. But when you load the beam, what is the uplifting? What is the deflection that you get at each support? It's zero. So because of that reason, when you apply the loads, the deformations are compatible and that will represent a concordant. So basically, uh, the concordant profile is one of the key things that will help us and concordant profile is a bending moment diagram. It's not arbitrary. It's a bending moment diagram. And only thing is sometimes we, we find hard to fit everything inside because we are talking about uh, basically about 26 different sections. So, so getting everywhere the stressors satisfied is not that easy, but not impossible. You can always try to do that. And if you get everything inside, it's perfect. But sometimes if you get about 96% inside, it's enough because at the beginning of the calculations, we make a small allowance for this type of inaccuracies. For this type of inaccuracies, we make a small, small uh, allowance. So is that clear? Is that clear, Bashita? Right. So in that case, shall we take a small break before we start the next part? That is telling you how to calculate the secondary moments. That is telling you how to calculate the secondary moments. By using the cable profile, by using the cable profile. Okay? Okay, so you take about 10-15 minutes break and after that we start. Okay? I'll keep this uh, available to you. So you can look at the spreadsheet. Shall I email the spreadsheet to you, Vashita? 
So let's take a beam. Now, this, this has nothing to do with the you know, example, the typical case. And uh, we'll assume that uh, it goes like this, it goes above, it goes below, it goes above, and so on. And I told you that. For a parabolic cable with eccentricity E, WS card of 8 is equal to PE. From this, W is equal to P8, PE or S card. So from this, we can say this V is equivalent to Set of loads acting here, 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 and also some loads acting here, and some loads acting here. The reason is this is a parabolic shape, so there will be an angle alpha, and that alpha can give rise to a force like this. And the horizontal component can give rise to compression, peak compression. And then throughout the length of the beam, there will be a pre-compression, and in addition to that, there will be forces. And by having supports in the analysis, uh, so what we do can do is, once we know all these forces, we can analyze it and then we can find the, the forces that are acting here to have zero delta at the supports, delta zero, zero delta. And from that, we can see that there will be a diagram like this. And that is the M2 diagram. So this is the way that we can determine M2. Uh, when the cable profile is known and the force is known. When the force is known, the cable profile is known. 
you can find M2 like this. You can find M2 like this. So, so this is equivalent loads. This is M2 using equivalent loads. It's a fairly straightforward method, but uh, we need to know the cable profile. We need to know R in the force. And uh, then we need capital crossing. O minus A to analyze. Minus zero to analyze. So these are needed. So I can show an example on this. Is that clear? Mashita? We need minus C. When you put all these nodes, minus C will give the will give the the various reactions that will act at the supports, and from that we can find the uh, moment uh, at uh, these two locations. So that's one method of finding secondary moments. Only thing is we can't uh, we can't find it from a spreadsheet, but you have to again use Midas uh, Gen or Midas Civil or uh, SAP tokens. So that is one way of doing it. And then uh, this is page number Mashita, you have been recording it, have you? Yeah, so uh, after that, uh, can you break it into small pieces so that it, otherwise it's too large to be loaded to model? So break it into, break it and then upload it to model. Okay? Right. Otherwise you can share it on uh, Google Drive that, that I also can copy it. Okay? So what we do is, uh, so I'll show you an example. I'll send this note to you. This is the note that we have uh, scanned and copied. Mm. So we require load method, but we look at the diagrams and then so so this is a beam with 25 meters, 40 meters, and 30 meters, and all these dimensions, everything is given, and uh, the stand alpha is 4 y naught divided by L because by fitting a curve to this, you can uh, uh, find the equation of the parabola, and once you know the equation of the parabola. You can find dy by dx at x is equal to zero. From that, you can find the angle is 4 y naught divided by L. So angle is, so you fit a curve here uh, using y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, and then find the parameters. From that, you can work out this angle. And then, uh, then you can see uh, this is uh, 20 meters long. 0.75 is the uh, so eight, uh, eight p eight p is thousand. Excess it is point seven five divided by twenty square. Fifty. So you can see the load is fifty upwards. Here the length is ten meters. Excess it is point three seven five. So eight into p thousand multiplied by point three seven five divided by ten square. 
30. Place 30. So likewise, you can find the upper forces and downward forces. And if you look at this upper force, you can see upper force here is 15 into 220, 300, and over here it's 150. So, so upper force is more. So if the upward force is more, what is the likelihood? The beam will lift up from the support. Beam will lift up from the support. To keep it there, we have to apply downward forces. So once you get all these forces in, you can put apply all these forces onto a beam model on SAP 2000. And then you will find the reactions are like this. You will find the reactions are like this. So from these reactions, you can draw 17.13 multiplied by 25, 17.13 multiplied by 25, you get 428 and 17.83 multiplied by uh, this length is 30 meters, 30. 534, 534. 534, yeah, 534, 428. And then, if you have this profile, from this, the profile is known. From this profile, you can find EP profile. EP is ES minus M2 over 1000. M2 over 1000, from that you can find EP so this is the EP profile, this is the ES profile. And if you look at ES profile, EP profile 0 0.803, 0 0.803 can be somewhere here and it can be even outside the beam. It can be outside the beam. And this is inside the beam. And uh, so basically EP can be outside the beam, but ES is the actual profile. It has to be inside the beam. So this is the method that you can use for finding secondary bonus. And then there's another method, and uh, that is the method I have used in the spreadsheet, because I don't have to refer to, uh, I don't have to find equivalent loads, that's number one. Secondly, I don't have to uh, do the analysis using MIDAS, but I can automate everything on the spreadsheet. So I have used the second method. So, so this is uh, the method. And it's based on uh, principle of virtual work or uh, you also have something called um, uh, uh, unit load theorem. So basically we say we have suppose support number one, two, three, four. And our second moments is M2. And we say the second moments here is M2. 2. And here we say M2. 3. And let's say the second moments are like this. 7,114. So these are the secondary moments that we have assumed. And uh, we have a table profile and we have to see how it is generated. And then what we say is we say it's going this way. It goes like this. So you can divide it into one diagram like that and another diagram like this. So we define a parameter called beta 2, beta 3, and beta so varies from 0 to 1, and 1 to 0. And beta 3 also varies from 0 to 1, 1 to 0. And depending on the number of sections, we can see how it varies. So here eight sections, so you get 0, 0 0.125, 0 0.25, 0 0.375. Likewise, we can see how it varies. And on this side, you get 10, so you get 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 0 0.9, 0 0.9, 0 0.9, 0 0.9, 0 0.9, 0 0.9, 0 0.9, 0 0.9, 0 0.9, 0 
0.7, it varies like that. So we, we can straight away say how the how beta varies, how beta varies. And if you look at the secondary moment, the moment, it is sigma beta j m2 j. So you add the secondary moment here plus secondary moment here and that component will be equal to this one. So the secondary moment at any section is given by sigma mj m2 j. Right? So this is the secondary moment. The secondary moment. And If you are, if you like to have the curvature, this one moment. So basically, if you look at the curvature due to secondary moments, curvature, the moment is P times E, and the curvature is given by EI, PE over EI. And secondary moments are positive because they are sagging. And a positive eccentricity E will give a hogging moment. So the curvature due to the cable is negative. Curvature due to uh, secondary moment is positive. So if you look at the curvature at a given location, the curvature is given by curvature is given by sigma beta j m two j minus p e whole thing divided by e i. So, so basically we can write an equation like this and we see how we can make use of virtual work to do that. So what we do is, we can see that we have a system, we have supports, and we can have the secondary moment M2 at I support, at any location, M2 is written as M2i multiplied by beta i. So, then the virtual work equation is, here you get all these supports, unknowns, support, unknown supports, but delta is equal to zero at those locations. So, we have the, if you look at the work done, work done, is moment multiplied by curvature. So curvature is given by sigma beta j m2 j minus pe over ei. 
and coverage is given by that and the moment is given by m2 i times beta i. So basically when you write this or integration L m2 i beta i multiplied by sigma beta j m2 j minus p e over e i times b equals zero because right hand side is zero the 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 different section at each support is zero so it's a right equation like this and m2 i can be removed because it's it's a it's a value and it's is the when it's the second moment at a given support but because this side is zero you can remove that then from that you can get an equation which says It says zero to L beta I beta J M two J dx over E I is equal to zero to L beta I dx beta I dx times P E beta I dx over E i. So you get an equation like this. And once you solve this equation for a name like this, So you will get a matrix like this, and I'll show you how to get it, M2, 2, M2, 3, and here you get L1 plus L2, here you get L2, here you get L2, L2, here you get L2 plus L3, and on the right hand side you get integration p e beta i dx 0 to l l1 sorry at the i support then here you get p e beta 3 here you get beta 2 dx and 0 to so you are integrate over the full length. Right? So you get an equation like this. So if you look at this, here you get a profile like this. And then you have, so you get E, and here you get beta 0 to 1. So you have to multiply these two. So when you multiply those two, you get something like this. So you have the profile going like this. And you have to multiply it by this. This is beta i or beta 2. So once you multiply, you get something like this. So it like this. And you get, and you are find the area of this. So integration P E beta to dx means this area. So you are find this area. <coughs> you are find this area. So the right hand side gives an area of the multiplication of these two diagrams. 
And on the left hand side, <coughs> you have these beta J values. Beta J like this. So beta 2, beta 3. So these are beta J values. And beta I can be here or beta I can be here or beta I can be here. So for a particular beta J, for a particular beta J, if you select this particular beta J, and here you can see beta I coincides over this area. And here you can see beta I coincides with the full thing. And here you can see beta I coincides only here. So this one, we can say the integration is, integration is beta I, beta J, dx over EI. And so this is beta I. And beta j is from, if this is s, s over, this is l2, s over l2, multiplied by, this goes this way, 1 minus s over l2, ds, integration from 0 to l2. And this one, here you get this side SO L2 multiplied by SO L2 DS integration 0 to L2 plus on this side you get 1 minus SO L3 1 minus SO L3 0 to L3 and on this one you get this L1, L2, L3 and this side you get okay the same thing 0 to L3 SO L3 1 minus SO L3 times this. So you get integrations like that to get the total area so if you, if you type 0 to L2, S over L2, 1 minus S over L2, ds, what do you get? You get S squared divided 2 L2 minus S cubed over 3 L2 squared. And when you so substitute L2 squared, you get L2 divided by 2 minus L2 divided by 3, so it gets L2 divided by 6. So the area is L2 divided by 6. And for this one, where you have both like that, you get L2 here, here you get L3, so you get 1 minus L, S2 over L. S2 L dx ds plus integration 1 minus S over L3 ds squared. So here you get squared. So you get here you get S when you 0 to L2, 0 to L3, so you get L2 squared, L2 divided, L2 divided by 3, and here you get L3 divided by, here you get One plus S O L three twice plus S squared over L three squared. 
integration ds. So here you get s plus 2 s squared divided by 2 l3 plus sorry, this minus this is minus this is plus s cube divided by 3 l3. And so once you want to substitute, you get L3 minus L3 plus L3 divided by 3. So you get L3 divided by 3. So, so you can say that O1 you get L2, 2, you get uh, only this half, that is L2 divided by 6, because for L, M2, you have this and this. So L2 divided by 6, this L2. And here, next one, you get that so that is l2 plus l3 divided by 6 twice because l2 plus l3 divided by 3 can be written that way so here you get next one it's like this and this l3 So this is L1 plus L1 plus L2. And here you get L2 plus sorry. So first one, second one. So this is M2, 2, this is M2, 3, and here you get this one, that is M2, I, and the other M2, I is this way, so that is M2, I again, so or oh, this gives me time, that is. So, the, so here you get these two are full triangles, so you get twice L1 plus L2. And here you get L2. And in the next one you get L2 here. Here you get twice L2 plus L2. Divided by 6. And M2, 2, M2, 3 is given by PE beta i dx integration. PE beta i dx integration. So you will get a matrix like this and what you have to find is these two components. The moment you find these two components, we can form the right hand side of the matrix. Left hand side of the matrix purely depends on the lengths like 40, uh, 30, 40, 40, 30, and here you get 40, here you get 40. So it will purely depend on the lengths of the members, the left hand side, right hand side depends on the cable. So this way also you can determine the secondary moments. And that's what I have done. So if you look at the stress sheet, you see 
I have calculated P E beta I dx, P E beta I dx. So we'll have a look at that. And so this is just for checking. So here you can see first you have to find beta 2. Beta 2, how it varies? These 40 meters. So you get eight sections. So it varies 0 0.125, 0 0.25, 0 0.375. So you can see how beta varies. And then it there are 10 sections here, it goes on 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.7, like that. And for beta 3, it goes from 0 to 1, 1 to 0. Then you have to find RP beta 2 EP upper, R2 beta 3 EP upper and lower. Why? We are trying to find the secondary performance due to the upper, upper one and the lower one. But I will tell you in a moment why we do that. For the time being, you can assume that, you know, we have to find it. Right? And then again to find the actual uh, moments, we you can look at Concord here and ES actual. And for the ES actual ES, we I have found these beta values again. So we we'll see what we are going to do here. And we'll go this side. This side. And I will highlight this particular. Now you can see uh, another line, so this line. And I have found some uh, values. On this side. I have found some values here. So we see what I have done on this spreadsheet. We we'll try to understand it. So I have the these are EP profiles. You can see these are EP profiles. So I have found. So these are EP, EP, RP, EP values, RP, beta, EP values, RP, EP, and beta also there. You can see here, RP, beta, EP, all are there. And why I do that is, here you can see integration, P, E, beta, dx. So, P is RP, extensive is E, P, beta, dx. And I am trying to find the secondary moments generated by the upper profile and lower profile. 
and you will ask why. This is the reason. And for this profile, let's assume that I am going to fit the profile here. So it's a EP profile and it's an upper profile. Then I fit EP lower. Then I calculate the corresponding M2 here. Two, M, two, three, and let's say I'll get a positive answer here, positive answer here, positive answer here, positive answer here. Let's, let's assume that I'm getting, so I'm looking at, uh, so we say that, you know, now we are looking at EP profile, and we are getting an upper profile and these are all e, RP, EP, beta values. The reason is right hand side of the equation is P, E, beta, DX. So this RP, E, beta. And let's say I am getting positive values here for both. And what is concordant profile? What is concordant profile? Concordant profile is M to zero. So on a line, you have positive values, zero is here. And can you find a zero in between? No zeros here. So if you want to find a zero, one should give positive value, the other one should give negative value. So which means the upper profile should give negative values, the lower profile should give positive values, then only you can find a zero here. So this is the reason for finding secondary moments due to the upper profile and lower profile. So I'll show you in a moment why it's important by changing the P-stress impulse. Right. Now let's look at this. Here can you see these are the secondary moments when the profile is fitted upper. And if the profile is fitted lower, these are the secondary moments. And you can see both these are negative, both these are positive. Let's try something else. I have selected the pre-stress force of 26,000. Now let's say I, I select 24,000. The moment I select 24,000, everything else will automatically change. <coughs> and we look at the profile. So this is the upper profile, lower profile, here everywhere it's separated, which means 24,000 is also viable force. But to look at the secondary moments generated, you see now, they are, one is positive, other one is negative. And if, can you find zero between two positive values? No. So which means, there's a special condition in continuous beams, all the feasible pre-stressing forces given by Magnal diagram will not work. For them to work, you need special conditions. So we look at that, how it happens. So, you find 24,000, you get a diagram, you try to fit a cable profile by converting it to the CS diagram, and converting it to EP diagram, you try to fit a cable, you find that it's not possible to find a bending moment diagram, however much you try. Why? Because for a bending moment diagram to exist between these two, so this is the EP profile, so let's say you have the beam, 
you find ES profile, the upper limits and lower limits, then you find the corresponding EP. These are EP values, and if you want to fit a bending moment diagram in between, then M2 here should be 0, M2 3 should be 0. But to get a 0 in between, this should create negative values, this should create positive values. Otherwise, you can never find a 0. So, for continuous measures, Magnal diagram cannot give the real limits on pieces. So in simply support case, Magnal diagram can straight away tell us the pre-stress force to be used. But in the case of uh, in the case of continuous ones, Magnal diagram alone cannot tell us the pre-stress force to be used. So what will happen if I use 15,000 in this case? Let's say I use 15,000 or 20,000. Let's say I use 20,000. I use 20,000. What will happen? Can you see the upper limit goes below the lower limit? Here there's a big problem. So that means 20,000 will not work. So from the magnet diagram, we can straight away say that. But when you use 24,000, the magnet diagram says it's okay. When you use 24,000, Magnal diagram says it's okay. Now here you can see no problem. But there's an extra condition to be satisfied. And the extra condition is based on M2. And M2 is not zero here, not, not minus here. And M, so because of that reason, we cannot use that 24,000. We have to go for a higher value. And then we go for a higher value. And when you go for 26,000, you can see both values are negative, both values are positive, which means here in between these two, you get zero. Here in between these two, you can get a zero. And here you can see it's pretty tight, 60. And that's why I found it little tough to ensure that when I tried to fit the curve, can you remember, I had a small problem finding, getting it inside because I have stretched it to the limit, stretched it to the limit. So 26,000 is a minimum force. If you try to use anything less than that, it will not work. So this is an extra condition that you have to meet. So what you have to keep in mind is in a continuous beam, continuous beam, Magnal diagram alone will not work. You have to find the secondary moments over the supports. If the secondary moments, when the cable is fitted at the upper limit, use minus values. The cable fitted at the lower, use positive values. Then zero is in between. Otherwise, zero is not in between. If you, if zero is not in between, when you try to fit, a uh, bending moment diagram in between, you can never do it. You can try for one year, you will never get the answer because there's no bending moment diagram that will fit inside. So that is one of the special conditions that that is there and that condition has to be fulfilled. So what, that's why in this spreadsheet, I have calculated the secondary moments due to upper profile and the lower profile. Upper profile and lower profile, of EP, I have calculated the secondary moments and secondary moments and each support has been calculated and if both upper gives negative values and both lower gives positive values, then only I can find zero. If one support, both are positive, which means there's no zero in between. You try to fit a 
Venn moment diagram, however much you try, you will never be able to fit the Venn moment diagram. So those are the special conditions that you have to satisfy. Is that clear, Bhashita? So basically, what you have to keep in mind is, in a simply supported case, Magnal diagram can straight away give us pre-stressing limits. Whereas in a continuous beam, Magnal diagram can give some limits, but all the limits given by Magnal diagram will not work. There will be additional limits imposed by the condition that for a concordant profile to exist, the second moments at each support should have negative and positive values when we look at the upper and lower limits. If that does not happen, then we cannot find a bending moment diagram that fits inside however much we try. So those are the conditions. Is that clear? So that's why now you can see upper positive, negative, negative, lower, positive, positive. And then I fitted a profile approximately with a small violation. Because of that small violation, you can see there's a small difference. This is small. And the moment I actually try 24,000, here you can see everything changes, and here you can see minus, plus, plus, plus. So both should be minus here. Otherwise, upper flow profile is not generating. Again, second moments is not generating second second moments. So this generates again, but this is not generating hogging all the time. So that's why the problem is. So I have to go for a bigger. But when I try to use uh, twenty thousand, you saw the problem. The magnet diagram itself shows the limits are not okay. Limits are not okay. So these are the conditions. So you have to satisfy this particular condition. It's a very important condition. All the pre-stressing forces indicated by Magnal diagram as feasible will not work in a continuous structure. You have to get a minimum force. And that minimum force will can be determined only by looking at the secondary moments. So that's why you, into this spreadsheet, some secondary moment calculation came in. The secondary moment calculation came in at this level to see whether the pre-stressing force selected is sufficient. Before you go to select the profile, you have to see that a bending moment exists. If there's no bending moment, don't try to find a bending moment because you will never ever be able to find it. So there's no bending moment. And from that onwards, the everything else is straightforward and you can see the actual values calculated here. When you go this way, you can see the actual values uh, calculated. Uh, the, the actual values are here. The second moments are here. So this is the concordant profile or the actual ES profile. This is the actual ES profile. And for the actual ES profile, you will get these values. And the same values are appearing here on the spreadsheet. The same values are coming here. And so you can compare it with the selected values. We assume 7,967. What is generated is 7,972, pretty close. And I assume 7,114. What is generated is 7,131. Again, pretty close. So that's how you can design a continuous bridge. At the moment you do this, the big design is almost over, then you can take time and do all the detailed loss calculations, then you can do uh, any other uh, calculation that you like to do, but once the cable is fitted, the pre-stressing force is there, everything else it may be a check, not a design, because the, once you do this, the design is over, we know the cable profile, we know the forces, we know the section. So the design is over, then you can start checking all the losses and any other check to see whether the stress violations are there. The chances are no stress violations will occur because we have already kept a small allowance 
when we start with the design. And when we can use 16,000 as the limit on pre-stress, I use 15,000. Is that clear, Vashiko? And then you can also see these, these profiles are fairly large. This, the limits are large. So if, by, if you start using a higher strength concrete and make it lean, you might be able to be, uh, you might be able to find a, a more economical section. You might be able to find a more economical section. Because the moment the stress range is made bigger, you can go for a smaller section, smaller section. So those are the things that you have to keep, keep in mind. And I, I have already sent the spreadsheet. So, so it's up to you to uh, look at it, look at the spreadsheet and try to understand. So, if you can, you can have a closer look again, and you can play with this spreadsheet before you start making any modification. And you can see it's a, not a very long spreadsheet, but it has the, all the necessary calculations. And uh, basically, what is highlighted in yellow color is a check to so select the correct. Correct uh, pre-stressing force. It's a it's an additional check, not an uh, not a. So basically, with all that, uh, the I can bring these continuous beams to an end, and I can share the earlier note. I'll send those notes as well, Bashita. Okay, I will send all those notes. And uh, the notes I used, but you can just go through it. But uh, you might be better off going through the video than going through the note because I have written everything in the note on the on the notes I made for the video. So so uh, you better stick with the video rather than the note. But if you want, you can have a quick look at the note and the diagrams and all that. There are additional diagrams that are given in the note. With that, shall I end the lecture? Any question? Any question anybody wants to ask? Only thing you have to keep in mind is designing a continuous bridge is not as simple as designing a simply supported bridge. Because for a simply supported bridge or even a composite bridge, we have only four equations. But the moment you draw the magnet diagrams at the critical sections, you can finish the design and then you can create a spreadsheet where you can check everything at every section you need. Whereas in the case of a continuous bridge, then first you have to generate the bending moment envelope by using a spreadsheet. It's not as easy as uh, generating a bending moment envelope for a uh, bending moment diagram for a simply support case because it's statically determinate. Here the system is statically indeterminate, so we have to use a program like 
sub 2000, generate the bending moment envelope, then you have to look at the modifications, the construction sequence effects, then you have to generate the actual bending moment diagram and monolithic bending moment diagram, then, then you have to go for envelopes, and then you have to assume secondary moments, and then you have to see how the cable profile can be selected so that the assumed secondary moments can be generated. So for, to do that, you have to do the calculations in a systematic manner, and I have showed step by step, and I have showed the uh, Excel sheet, I have given the Excel sheet, so, so only thing is I, the only difference is that uh, this particular spreadsheet, the compression has been considered as negative, whereas uh, when we derive the equations for you, we consider compression as positive, so you can actually write the equations and get things done, but all the answers will be more or less the same. Answers are not dependent on the stress sign convention you use, because this is a sign convention which is applicable to both hogging and sagging moments. So whether you consider compression as positive or tension as positive, the equations will be different, but the answers will be the same. Answers will be the same. So that's why I use this one, but for your assignment, you can use, you can rewrite the, this with all the, uh, all the, your sign convention, but when you look at the limits, pre-stressing forces, everything, you will get the same answers. Those cannot change. So with that, I'll end the lecture. Thank you very much. Thank you.